Forkamp from Gamer Headquarters. I'm here at uh, Otacon 2017, and we're speaking with Tony Oliver today. How are you doing? He's a voice actor, an extraordinary, and he's been doing it for quite a while. Um, Many of them, but years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how exactly did you get into uh, doing voiceover work? Um, mostly because I hated the idea of getting evicted uh, from my apartment. Okay. Um, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was, I always wanted to be an actor. I, I trained to be an actor, and I was in L.A. trying to break into, which is where I grew up. But I was trying to break into movies and film, and I just stumbled upon an audition for uh, for somebody who was looking for somebody who sounded like they were younger than eighteen, oh, and, okay. and was an actor and over eighteen because of the California labor laws. Right. And so uh, I auditioned. Um, they wanted experience. I lied. I told them I had it. I didn't. I don't recommend that. Don't do that because they find out you're you're through. It's easier to find out now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, and I, uh, I I got this little part in this little doing background work in a Louis Mall film, and they liked that, and they took me to uh, they cast me in a feature, which is called Sequence and the Fire Child, and that ended up on television. And out of that, I got a phone call, which led me into Robotech, and that kind of started things off. So I, I kind of uh, voice work kind of found me oh, more okay. than me looking for it. Right. Because at the time, you had, I, I thought you had to be funny voices in Mel Blanc to do it. Right. And, and really, what people need is just real good actors. <laughs> oh, okay. And where, where did you study? You said you're... you're oh, all over L.A., American Academy, American National Academy of Dramatic Arts, at USC, Cal State Northridge, just various, you know, trainings along the way. And I was part of a theater company, which had a training component as well. Okay. So. And um, you, you've been... Uh, been doing it for really, like uh, when when I grew up, I was uh, I was introduced to anime from uh, from Speed Racer and mm -hmm. G Force mm -hmm. and uh, and Star Blazers. But really, one of the movies that uh, that really got me back into anime again was Akira, and you mm -hmm. were. You were in that. You've played uh... in the second dub. Uh, yeah, I did a bunch of people. I mean, it was one of those where I, I played like twelve different guys that died horrible deaths. <laughs> you know, um, so you can hear my voice pop out of a tent, interview. Right. You know, in, uh, interrogating someone before. I die, mm -hmm. or laughing before I fall off a motorcycle and die, or, <laughs> or shouting to somebody before the thing eats me and I die. So it just that's what I did on it. It was uh, it was fun. It was I'd seen the film before, mm -hmm. both the original dub, and then I'd also seen it in Japanese, so I was kind of ready for what was coming. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, getting into that, um, what, what I've, like right now you're doing Lupin the Third. Yeah. You're the lead character. Yeah. And uh, how would you, uh, how, how do you basically, would you compare that as far as like doing like the bit voices, like being like the background characters, and as, you know, as far as Lupin as the star of that? Yeah. And like, how do you, how do you compare, like, like what, well, as an, as an actor, I need, when I'm playing the small part, the smaller parts, um, I, I only have to worry about them for that session. So mm -hmm. I worry about the story arc there. I think about what he's going to do. I don't have to get too deep with it. With some, even, even as a comedy like, like Lupin, there's a story there I have to pay attention to. Right. And the relationships between them. So it's just what I keep in my head mm -hmm. is that you know, I, I, I know what the relationships are and, and therefore I can play a, a little deeper to this character than that character because I know them. Um, in terms of approaching the work, to me, it's the same. Okay. Um, I, I like the fact that when I'm doing a single character, I'm only doing the single character, so it's easier on my voice. Right. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but to me, I approach the work the same. It, uh, every character, I think, deserves my full attention, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and trust the director and everyone else to make sure it all fits. Okay. And that would be like the same uh, what you what you did as far as uh, in the video games that you had. Like you've you've done voices in Dynasty Warriors, yeah. and. Uh, and also in Castlevania, um, you know, basically. Well, yeah, the same idea. Those basically yeah, the, the same way. It is. It, the, the, the only thing you have to worry about is, is in terms from an actor's perspective, is the t is where is it going? <laughs> American cartoons, which I'm directing too right now, <clears throat> um, tend to be more about the words and the action than the depth. So you, you play the surface a little bit more. Anime, it's all about the depth. So you okay. play the subtext a little bit more. And it's, so it's a matter of where in that that range do you do you focus your your energies on? Um, yeah, when I'm doing uh, video games, it's kind of in between. It mm -hmm. Depends on the game you're doing. Okay, you yeah. know, if I'm doing a fighting game, it's it, there's no depth to it. It's just you right. know, die. Um, but with Dynasty Warriors, I play three different characters. Some of them talk to each other, so I have to pay, maintain this guy is, an, is 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 educated. This guy's a street guy. This mm -hmm. guy's a youngster, and just have to keep that in my head in order to make sure that the the, the voice sounds very similar, but the attitude's different. Right, and that's okay. how I get away with it. 
Yeah, and, and you know, I guess you would, you know find that uh, that you're a lot more marketable at that point so, since uh, you could play like a younger you know as a, yeah. as a voice actor be playing being able to play a. a, a a child, or like a, or a younger it, person, no, or like an old man, or something like that. You know that. Um, is that it something helps. That you yeah. like about it? Yeah, I am. I'm not the most versatile of voice actors, but I like to think I'm fairly versatile. Um, you know, I've got five or six different characters that I could play in the same show, believably. Uh, yeah, it's a big part of it, especially when you first start. Um, uh, most of the time, you don't play leads. Most of the time, you don't have main characters. Right. Most actors' lives are filled with playing bit parts, and then every so often, you get a you get a couple of good ones or mm -hmm. something that's high profile if you're lucky. And so, uh, so uh, there's not a lot of difference in approach. It's just a matter of um, you really got to like those little, little parts and learn how to, how to change your voice. And so versatility can get, you, can get you hired. That was my fault, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was taking a nap earlier and I didn't want to fall asleep. I didn't want to miss the interview that I missed. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had the wrong time. Okay, um, and just basically to wrap it up, I mean, you, you, you just uh, had mentioned in passing that you were uh, working on, on a new project, so what, what, what can you tell us about what you're doing? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm directing four different shows right now, okay. and, uh, and, and continuing to voice act, so I'm still doing uh, Minato and Naruto, I'm still continuing to do that. Lupin just came out, so um, Lupin will be out, it's now out, and mm -hmm. then hopefully there'll be more. Uh, I've got Hunter Hunter and on Cartoon Network right now, as well as JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which I do both voices, but mostly direct on that. Mm -hmm. And then I have two American shows, which I can't talk about till next year. But okay. one of them is a major, a major franchise. Okay, uh, and okay. Um, and uh, the other one is uh, hope to make a major franchise out of it. Would uh, would a, like a genre be a spoiler? Um, and one of them is a preschool show okay. uh, with l uh, lovely characters. It's just it, the beauty film thing about that is the cast and the scripts are so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the other one is a girls show that okay. was meant to compete with Barbie. I guess that would be uh, uh, the best way I could put it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, compete, I can actually to, think compete of, with that. I can think of two off the top of my head that it may be. Yeah, yeah. probably not. <laughs> this, is, this is a rework. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. it's uh, it's been great talking to you. Uh, my pleasure. I'd like to thank you for your time. And Thanks a lot. This is Glenn Forkamp from uh, Gamer Headquarters, along with John, uh, uh, with Tony Oliver. Sorry, <laughs> Tony Oliver. And uh, we're here at Otacon 2017.